Right. So a chord is a segment whose endpoints are on a circle. So that means that I've got S and R, that's a chord. So RS and UT. Why are RS and UT congruent? Like if you had to think about it, why would RS and UT be congruent? Does anybody have any thoughts? Because this forms triangles, right? So you look at it, I for sure have vertical angles, don't I? And then aren't the, all the radius, the radii, aren't all the radii congruent? Congruent, 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 right? So that means that side angle side, there's congruent triangles that are formed. Okay, so side angle side. Let's look at number B. BAC and DAE, why are those congruent? Those angles. Um, because they also have vertical, uh, vertical no, angles. And then they also have their radiuses. Yeah, all of the things, the radiuses. It's again, I could do side, side, side. I could do side angle side. Okay. Side angle side, there's all sorts of different ways to prove that they are congruent. So let's go to the theorems. Let's talk about the theorems. All right, here we go. If two chords in a circle or in congruent circles are congruent, then their central angles are congruent. So if MN and PQ are congruent, then the central angle is congruent, angle T, right? Because if I have an angle measure that opens up this big, obviously the line, let me use my pencil, obviously this pencil line is gonna be the same as if I had one like below it. Gosh, that's pretty hard. Okay, wait. <laughs> to, um, they have to be kind of like opposing each other for this to work. So if MN is congruent to PQ, then the angles are congruent. And the converse switched. If I know that their central angles are congruent, the same degree measure, then the chords are congruent. Okay. So theorem 10.3, 10.4, if two arcs in a circle are congruent, here's an arc. If this arc is congruent to this arc, then their chords are congruent. Then NM chord and PQ chord are congruent. This is good. Let me focus a little bit. The converse means if I know the chords are congruent, then the arcs are congruent. So this is going to be if arcs are congruent. Whoa, not pi. I've been writing a lot of pi lately, sign. Then the chords are congruent. If the converse says if the chords are congruent, then the arcs are congruent, okay? So there's that. All right, <clears throat> another theorem. If chords are equidistant from the center of the circle, see these, chords are the same distance from the center, then they are congruent, okay? SE is congruent to SF. 
So there's a lot happening, but there's a lot of info on chords. This one is the converse. If chords in a circle are congruent, then they are the same distance from the center. Okay, so if the chords are congruent, AB is congruent to DC, then they're the same distance from the center, which, you know, that makes sense, right? Lastly, let's practice one. Here we go. If EF is congruent to EG, right? EF, EG, I'm gonna do two lines for that. I should really do it in like a different color because we've got lots of gray on this paper. DG is 15. Okay, think about it. If this is 15, right? What is AB? So if this is 15, CG is 15. And then I wanna know what AB is. So AB is the opposite chord. Remember, they're equidistant from the center. So that means that the chords are congruent. So what is AB? How long is AB? Someone? 30. 30. AB equals 30. Good. Okay. So there's a lot of chord info. Let's do some more. All right. If a diameter is perpendicular to a chord, then it bisects the chord. So this dotted line is gonna be my diameter. And then it bisects, well, at first it's perpendicular to a chord and then it bisects it, so that's good. Likewise, if I flipped it, if, the, if a diameter By sex accord, then it is perpendicular. So this all says it right here. CD is my diameter. AB is perpendicular to CD. Then AE and BE are congruent. If CD is a diameter and AE is congruent to BE, then I have perpendicular lines. Okay. Um, 10, seven. The perpendicular bisector of a chord contains the center. If it bisects it, it must be in the middle of the circle. If a chord is bisected, the line must run through the center. That's obvious. Okay. All right, here we go. So I've got, there, much better. All right, in circle P, the measure of AB I guess I could just zoom out. I'm trying to adjust it so much, but I should just zoom out. AB is 43, the arc. Okay. So before I even like continue, if arc AB is 43, BC must be 43. Let's just fill in all the obvious information. Okay. That means that AC is 86, right? What else does it tell us? AC is equal to DF. The chords are the same size. And hey, they're probably bisected. Just saying. They're probably bisected. Because look, I've got a line that goes through the center that's perpendicular. So AG, I'll do colors. 
AG has to be the same. Hey, GC is two. AG must be two. AC is the same as DF. Well, seems that AC is two plus two, which is four, right? DF must be the same. It tells us it is four. Here's two and two. Now, I filled in so much information in pink that you're able to answer all these questions now. <clears throat> Ready? Um, D, F, D, F, from D to F. Someone tell me what is it? D, F. Four. Four. Good job. Um, arc, A, C. Arc, A, C. 86. Sorry, say it again. 86. 86. I live in Costa Mesa and there's John Wayne Airport next to me and it's 7 a.m. Like all the planes go, 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 like right after each other, crazy. So it's just like, I hear the airplanes. They're like lined up, literally, just waiting to take people to wherever on a Wednesday morning. Okay. H, F H. Someone tell me. Two. Two. Arc D E. Arc D E. That's short. Cause look, if B C and A B are forty three, these are forty three. Well, I just answered my own question. It's forty three. Uh huh. Okay. Straight line AC. It doesn't have an arc over it, so it just means straight line AC. Someone tell me. Four. Four. Arc DF, which is the same as arc AC, guys. It's the same, 86. And my degree symbols are missing. I gotta fix that. Okay, here we go. So, talking about something else. Say that GP is three, okay? Right here. GP is three. Find PC, oh, I have to make a triangle. We know that GC is two. They've already told us that. Find PC. This is kind of easy, guys. We know that it's a perpendicular. Find PC. Call it X. I hope you're thinking Pythagorean theorem. Four plus nine equals X squared. 13 equals X squared. 13 equals, I'm sorry, X equals radical 13. Okay. So that's about 3.6 if you cared, approximately. Cool. All right, so I'm gonna throw a couple problems from Pearson on to your, um, sorry, 
on to for homework and that is all um we're just doing chords today we're gonna have a review starting tomorrow uh 10.1 to 10.3 so one day review and then we're gonna have a quiz that means we're gonna have a quiz on friday tomorrow's gonna re review 10.1 to 10.3 quiz on friday okay all right Awesome. So we are done. I'm going to post it on Pearson. Give me at least like five to 10 minutes to get that done. And then um, you're good. Any questions, guys? Okay. Um, Anna, I'll answer your question. Everybody else, you guys can go. Um, Anna, I believe three o'clock. Right, because you got the email, right? Um, I got I got the email that it was today, but I don't think the time on it. There might have been I might have missed it, honestly. You would have gotten another email. Um, you can probably down check again because yesterday I only received the um one saying it was April seventh, but this morning when I checked, I saw it. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, and then are you going to like send us the Zoom link or email. is it going to be emailed to us? Okay. Link. So I think he's probably sending you guys as well. Okay. All right. I will talk to you guys later. Um, okay. Ms. Kat, yeah. Um, we won't be tested on chapter 10 material, right? Because this is this month. We're just basically learning it now. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. Thank you.